Good day, students, and welcome to the first video lecture of this personal finance and economics class. We're talking today about job markets. Particularly, we're talking about this because I want to help you find a job. And here are the big picture things that you should consider. This slide that you see here is a list of all the things that we're going to talk about. So as you're creating your notes, this is what you want to have in that big box on the right hand side of the Cornell notes. So as we're looking at this slide and as you're working on copying those things down, let me just do an overview of all this information we're going to talk about. One thing that you want to consider is the availability of jobs in a particular field. We looked at which job fields were growing and which job fields were not growing. Um, but part of your ability to decide what job you want is not just knowing which ones are growing, which ones aren't, but like a long run prediction of which job fields will be growing. Now, there are definitely economists who do this and people whose whole job this is, but you should be able to look at what they're saying about a job field and make your own decision about whether or not you trust their prediction or not. So here are some of the big things that economists use to decide whether these fields are going to grow or shrink over time. So first of all, this is the thing, the first one on here, the recessions and depressions, uh, that we're going to talk about more in depth. But in general, if the economy is getting better, then all the job fields are growing. But if there are different interesting causes for recessions and depressions, the economy going down, it might significantly affect one area of the economy, but not others. Um, same thing with each of those other three bullet points. If the demand for a particular product goes up, then you can expect there will be more of those jobs making that product. Same thing for service jobs. If there are a lot of people who are getting degrees in your field, that means there are a lot of people seeking these jobs. So you'll be competing with a lot more people. So there might not be a lot of availability of jobs because you're having so much competition. Then if the job has a lot of side benefits to it, like usually you'll find uh, that jobs that offer health insurance, lots of vacation, upward mobility, which is the ability to like advance and get higher level jobs within the same company. Uh, those are going to be jobs that are hard to get, but they're also very desirable. And as you're looking at what you're actually getting, this is called the value of compensation. You want to consider both how much you're actually getting paid, like your wages, your salary, 401k, but you also have to compare that against the inflation in the economy, which is how quickly money is losing its value in the economy, how quickly the cost of living is going up, particularly for your area. So like, for instance, if you live in New York, the cost of living is high and is going up faster than in other places. And finally, you want to consider those side benefits, monetary and non-monetary compensation to decide whether or not it is a job that you would actually want for yourself. OK, so let's talk about depressions and recessions. Here you see a graph of since 1948 up through uh, just after 2011, the GDP, which is the gross domestic product, a list of all of the things a country makes in a year and then all of their values added together. And this in particular is the change in GDP each year. So some years it goes up a lot, some years it has gone down. Most years it's gone up, you'll notice, but each of these gray areas is a spot where the economy has gone down significantly for a considerable period of time. And those are called either recessions or depressions. In 1948, uh, we are after the Great Depression, it would be sort of back here and it would be a huge drop, but you can see that the one that we had in 2008 was really, really bad. Even compared to all of the previous ones, it was really, really bad. That's why they call it the worst one since the Great Depression. So here's the reason you should care about this in terms of your job. Uh, in the most recent recession, follow this red line, that's 2007. This is how many jobs were lost. So it's percent job loss relative to the peak employment. So Relating it to how many jobs there were at the start of the recession, uh, the country lost whoop, just almost 7% of its jobs. And it is tracked back up over time. But if you notice all these other recessions that we saw earlier that were smaller, not only did they not lose as many jobs, they also recovered faster to get back to this line, which is getting back to the number of jobs you had before the recession hit. So this was a very serious recession that we lived through as a country. And even that compared to the Great Depression, which is this is an estimate of that annual data. If you look at this blue line, lost 20, over 20 percent of the jobs. So if you're in a depression or recession situation, there are certain jobs that don't go away as quickly. 
So teaching jobs or uh, jobs in the medical fields, necessities, those are jobs that don't go away as quickly. And certain jobs will weather those storms better than others. So as you're picking a job, consider how depressions and recessions will affect you. And if you choose a job that's uh, relatively fragile, then you should look into making sure you have other job options open to you in case you lose that job. And then here's another issue. Within your job, how much upward mobility are you going to have? And I found an interesting article from Glassdoor, and this is also a useful website if you would like to find good places to work in your field. So they were listing the best places to work. As with most of these things, you should always be suspicious when a website is promoting the things that are their products, which they're selling and reviewing. So be somewhat suspicious. But in general, the best places to work, you'll notice there's a lot of technology firms, but also like in and out Burger. They probably mean their corporate division. But in fact, uh, if you can move up pretty quickly, that is usually rated highly. So if you can get promotions, that means you're earning more money. That means you're getting more respect. That means you're getting more hours and responsibilities and more skills that you can transfer to other places. Upward mobility is the way that you will get up out of, say, lower income levels to higher income levels. So consider that when you are considering what job to look into. Here's the next thing that you should consider. This is a graph of inflation rates. So I talked earlier about the inflation rate and how it affects the amount of money you come you have coming in. Uh, here's the thing. If you earn a flat amount of money, $5 an hour every year, that's really low. Don't earn that much money. But if you earn $5 an hour year on year and you earn, work the same number of hours, you're actually earning less each year. Let's take a look at why. On this graph, you can see 0% inflation would mean that your $5 is worth the exact same amount of value every single year. But you will notice that the majority of years, the inflation rate is above zero. And that means that, let's say this year, if you had uh, $5 one year, it would only buy you, let's see, 20% less the next year. So that would be a dollar less. So your $5 in 1914, if we get to, maybe that's about 1920, 1920, your $5 would only buy you $4 worth of stuff. So you actually want to make sure that in your job, you are increasing your pay every year so that it keeps up with inflation. And the other thing that you want to make sure your pay keeps up with is the general cost of living in your area. Now, this is tracked in the whole U.S. economy, and I believe that is what we have here, the Consumer Prices Index. But it's different for different places within the country. So you actually want to look at your local area and make sure that your pay is exceeding it. Because if you look here from 2008 to 2013, this is the rise in regular pay. So regular pay right now is really only rising about like 1%. But if inflation is here above 2%, that means that stuff is getting more expensive and you have less value in money to buy it with. And that's a problem. So you want to look for jobs that have consistent regular pay increases. Lastly, you want to look at compensation. And in compensation, you have monetary compensation and non-monetary compensation. Monetary compensation is things like your hourly wages, your salary, your 401k, which is a, an investment retirement plan where your job matches some of what you put in there and there are some tax benefits for you. The reason all those things are valuable is because they just straight add money into your life. And hourly wages and salary are just two different ways of tracking it. Salary, you get paid regardless of the number of hours you work, as long as you work some minimum number of expectations in terms of what you complete for that job or the days you were there. Um, hourly wages is however many hours you log, you are paid at a certain rate, and that's just totaled up and added into a paycheck at the end, and you can get overtime and things like that as a way to earn more money. Over here on non-monetary compensation, you have side benefits that people enjoy, like having time off or particularly having uh, time off if you're having children, uh, parental leave during that time. Uh, promotions, the ability for upward mobility, like I mentioned earlier. And lastly, you can have health insurance. These are not the only examples, uh, but they are prominent examples of these different kinds of compensation. So when you're actually going to find a job, some fields draw on social media platforms like LinkedIn or Glassdoor, or you'll probably hear other ones advertised. Um, and they'll put out their job openings through like CareerBuilder, ZipRecruiter, Monster.com, 
And you, as a person looking for a job, can search by your field or job title or level of education, and you can narrow down the jobs in particular. Um, what you'll find, though, is that they're often requesting very high levels of training or experience. And one thing that I can recommend is that you apply audaciously for jobs. So you can apply and work towards getting those jobs. And you know you're competing with other experienced people, but as long as you've chosen a field that is growing reasonably quickly, you can get into a job and then build that experience for yourself. Maybe having to consider internships or taking a lower position than you would otherwise. But again, if you found a place with upward mobility, then you'll be just fine. Last thing we're going to talk about is job interviews. So once you've gone through the process of finding a job and you've done the application, you've done a resume, and you've picked it in a field that you actually want to work in, you've got good options and good compensation, then you're going to be thinking about how am I actually going to land this job? So a job interview is like a tryout for a job. You can think of it as like going out to the field and showing off your skills and different jobs run them all very differently. So it's difficult to predict exactly what's going to happen. But here are things that you want to prepare. You want to know the location and time for the interview. You want to know exactly how you're going to get there and what you can do to make sure you get there if something goes wrong, like if the bus breaks down or the subway gets stopped up. Uh, so you want to actually plan in some extra time. You want to make sure you know everything that you can possibly know about the person who's going to be interviewing you and the company that you're interviewing at. Um, and you might have to do some research and asking around and do some sneaky spying of a totally legal variety in order to find that information. And finally, you actually want to consider what you're going to wear. This is not a thing that I can offer you a lot of advice about. I'm terrible at clothes, but I will tell you that uh, you can look online. If you visit this place ahead of time, you can look to see what people wear there. And whatever people wear at that job, try to dress like one level above it just to be safe because this is a job interview. It's a professional opportunity. Um, so try to dress a little more formally yet conservatively uh, because once you've been accepted in that job, you can find what you feel comfortable wearing in the job.